Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be focused on a server banner. Now a server banner is unlocked once you achieve 15 boosts for your community. And I want to start out by mentioning the program I'm using here is called Adobe Photoshop. It's available on any operating system. It costs around $10 per month to use it, though I'm sure some of you have found other ways to acquire it. I wanted to mention that because I'm seeing so many comments of people asking, what program do you use? Well, there it is. Now this design here, it offers several different ways of customizing it. As you can see here, there's four different slots for images. You can either have one entire image covering all four slots, or you can break up each slot into its own individual image. For example, for a anime-based server, you might want to use each of these for four different characters. Now before I get into the actual tutorial, I do want to mention that this style offers some alternatives. Now I'm not going to go into much detail as to how to do the alternative, but I will go over a quick example right at the start. Now as always, I'm going to have this available to download so you'll have access to this as well. But essentially all I did for this alternative style, it's not it, there we go, is I grabbed a different wallpaper image, I went to filter, blur gallery, and field blur, and I put it up at around 30 to 40. And then after that, I just added dots, glass, and then various shapes with a dot on them. And to end it off, I just put a brush stroke behind this text on the side, just to make it a bit more visible. Now, I'm not going to be showing you how to make this, as I just mentioned, but it's going to be here if you want to try a different look for this banner. So, without further delay, let's get into the tutorial. We're going to start off by going to File, New, and 960 by 540 is the size that we're going to use. Click Create, and unlike before, we're actually going to save this background, so just click on the lock to unlock it, create a new layer, and we're going to drag in our line pattern. But we're going to swap them to luminosity and bring the opacity down to about 30%. And then all of these here, we're going to do Control G and call this the base. Let's make this orange and then create a new layer. Now this layer, we're going to do Control G with to group it. And we're going to call this the main images. Then we can right click on the eyeball. Let's make this yellow. Then come over to your rectangle tool. And then just drop down a random shape. We'll be adjusting it in just a moment. Now I'm going to come over to properties tab to do so. If you don't see the Properties tab, you're going to have to come over to Window, go down to Properties, click it. It's going to pop up right over here, and you can dock it to the side, or you can leave it right where it initially came up at. We're going to swap this to a random color. It does not matter at all, because we're going to be overlaying an image on top. As for the stroke, we don't want it. For the width and the height, we're going to be using 362. So put that in the width and then do the same for the height. Next, we're going to do Control T and adjust it so it is centered. That is the first one. Now do Control J and let's move this up to around there, just so we have a bit of space in between them. And then Control J, let's move this to the center. Actually, that isn't lining up too well, but luckily, since we have these lines in the back, which are perfectly diagonal in the same way that these squares are, we can take this square, knock it down a tad until it lines up with that. Then we'll take this one on the left, line it up with that as well. And that is a pretty nice space in between there. Now we can do the same thing on the other side. Control J and move that over until it lines up just like so and then this one on top we're going to have to adjust it just a tad 
to make sure it also lines up as we want. And that is perfect. Let's name each of these bottom, top, left, and then right. We will take all of these and we shall move them down to about there. Now we're going to right click on the first one, go to blending options, drop shadow, we want 34 for this first section, then 0, 4, 7. Click OK. Then right click, copy layer style, and we shall paste that on each one of these. Now we could also just apply it to the top, but if you have an image that is being clipped on, applying it to the entire folder is also going to apply it to those. So while in this case, where we're having one that covers the entire span, it's not going to be really noticeable. If you have one that is just specific to the size of the rectangle or a bit smaller, that will show up. So it's best to just put it in on each one of these shapes. Now we can go ahead and grab the image we'll be using and do control T after you control V paste it down. Now we're going to adjust it till it fits the frame. Click the check mark. Then we can either do a right click, create clipping mask or hold alt and click in between the layer. Now we'll do the same thing. Control J and clip it. Control J and then clip it. Control J and clip it. And now the center area right here is done. We can collapse those images, create a new layer, do control G and call this miscellaneous lines. And those lines that you saw going across on each section will also be doing the same here. Let's make this blue, come over to our rectangle tool, make sure we're not on stroke, but instead on fill and we so drop this down at about that size. Now control T and adjust it till it's at 45 degrees. Move it into position. That is actually a bit too short. Let's increase the size just a tad. That is good. Let's move it just like so. Then do control J, control T, go to the width, add a negative to the front of it, click check mark, move this to the other side. One more time, control J, control T, this time go to the height, add a negative. What did I do? I must have mistyped. There we go. And then move those down as well. And these are also now in position. And I might actually adjust all this up just a little bit. Not that's too much. There we go. That's perfect. Now we're going to come back into these miscellaneous lines to control V with this cloud texture or this scenery with clouds. Make sure it is in position and then go to overlay and just clip it on. I will be doing the same thing for every single one of these. Now this is where we're going to use that little shortcut instead of going onto each single layer here, we're going to right click on the group, go to blending options, go to drop shadow, we'll have this at 46, 0, 4, and 7. And this helps these lines stand out just a little bit more than they would have before. Now we're going to return to the base, create a new layer, do control G, let's call this the text. It's going to be very quick with this part, we're going to be using Tokyo. Let's say anime and Japan. Nope, that's not how I spell it. These are going to be the following color, 31, 31, 31. There we go, control T, and this is going to be at 45 degrees. Let's actually increase the size so it's more visible because keep in mind as a server banner this is going to be fairly small at about there so you want to be able to read the text. Now you could probably go even higher with the sizing but I might just leave it off there for now. Let's 
to actually move this down a bit. And while in the move tool, I'm just using my arrow keys to adjust those. Now we can go ahead and grab our star pattern. This is gonna go in the top left. We're gonna make them the following color. Well, just basically the same color we've been using for everything else, that shade of blue. 3F99FD, click OK, right click, Rash has their style. Let's call this the stars. Make sure we name this lines and call this the base. We're gonna actually go ahead and just lock that just in case. Stars, we're gonna bring the opacity down to 30%. And we will adjust them by doing control T until they fit about that. Now we're gonna come over and grab these Sakura trees, drop that in, right click, blending options, color overlay, and we'll be using the following color, ECE7E7. Click OK, once again, right click, Rash has their style, Control T, and we will adjust these a bit. So the first one can go actually below everything else and the line should be at the very top. We'll call this Sakura one and it can go right around. Put the first one there and we'll make adjustments to that in a moment after we get that little corner shape made. And the second one can go right around here. Now we're going to collapse this for the time being. We're going to go to miscellaneous lines, click plus to create a new layer, then do control G and call this the pop out. Go to the eyeball, right click on it. Let's make this green. Now we're going to come over to our rectangle tool. Now for the sizing, we're going to do 180 by 180. Control T, let's make this 45 degrees and we will position it right around here. Click the check mark. Now create a new layer. Come back to our rectangle tool. Drop that down. We're gonna start off with 180 by 180, but we will adjust it in just a moment. So fill, we don't want it. Stroke, we're gonna have it at pure white. We want it to be a solid line and let's say maybe six pixels or maybe four. Four looks a bit better, but we'll see in just a sec. Once we put it in place and we will adjust that down. Yep, four look to be the lucky number. We're gonna call this the stroke. We're gonna call this the base. Now do control V and drop in your clouds. For these clouds, we're going to put them at a soft light. Control T. Oh, make sure they're clipped on. Clouds. And adjust them to around a bit more. There. Now create a new layer. We're going to come over to our text using Tokyo and font color white. I'm gonna put the name of the group here, my group, but you can also put the logo here or just about anything else you can think of that would fit well within that space. Now we're gonna right click on the base layer, go to blending options, drop shadow. We're gonna have this as 35, six, four, and seven. Now for our last step, we're gonna to return to the base and gonna create a few different shapes. Let's create a new layer, Control G, call this shapes. Now we're gonna drop down just some random ones like that. This will be our first one. No stroke, the color, we'll use a green. And then we'll do another one we we'll just do control J, bring this down, and let's make this one pink. And all of these colors were originally grabbed just from this image. The last one, control J, let's move this over. And this one can just be 
blue. Now we're going to go on to linear burn, drop the opacity, linear burn, and drop the opacity, and finally linear burn, and drop the opacity. This is green, pink, blue. So blue, we can put one right over here. Pink can go right up top. Just like that. And then green, let's put it over here. Same thing on the other side, control J, control T. Let's put green down here. We'll take pink, control J, control T. Let's put it like that. And then we'll take the blue, control J, control T, and we will move it right there. And then that marks the end for the tutorial. You can go ahead and save by doing file, export, save for web, or file, save as, and choose PNG. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna have another video popping up on the screen shortly, and I hope you all have an awesome day.